right, all right, all right, all right. Where did we leave off? You killed me with a toaster. You remember? You threw it down from the Towers of America. We talked about Galileo's free fall law. We had the equation, 16t squared. If you're going, I don't know what she's talking about, please listen to the previous lecture. So what we're interested in is we developed this formula where we said we could find at any time. So maybe I'm interested in one second. So what I do is I have a small gap. That's that H value, remember my error. And I say, well, let that error be 0.1 second. So in other words, I want to know what the time interval between 1 to 1 point second, how fast that toaster's flying. So happy you asked. So let's see if we can kind of write this out. Let me get, give me a, give me a collar. Got my collar going right there. All right. So I think I'm, I think I'm good. All right. So basically what we want to do is first of all, remember my function, my Galileo's free fall law was that. So that's what I'm looking for. I want to know my time of interest that I want to know is it at, a, at exactly one second, how fast is that toaster flying? Well, the problem is, is I can't, I don't know how to get exactly one second right now. So what we do is we get something close. And what would be close then would be, well, that error. Okay, so I said, let my error be 0.1. Okay, so now what I'm looking at is between 1 and 1.1 second. So I want to write out my change of feet in my change, and then this was in seconds. Okay, so this is the same thing as your slope formula, your change in y over your change in t. So we developed this formula that said this is my t sub 0, what I'm interested in, this is what I want, but right now I have to have some kind of gap, and then f of t sub 0, and then all over h. So that's, that's what we did the last lecture. We, we figured out how did we get this formula from the basic slope formula. All right, so now from here what we do is we just simply plug our function in, and where our variable is, we plug in these values. So in other words, this first one, I would have 16 t sub 0 plus h, that's a 0, might be ugly, squared, because it's 16 t squared, minus 16 and then t sub 0 squared all over h. So you see what I did is I just simply filled in, okay, I'm evaluating my function at what's in parentheses. All right, now the next thing I could do is put in numbers, right? Because I know what t sub 0 is, is 1. I know what h is, that's my error, my gap, so that's 0 0.1 squared minus my t sub 0, 1 squared, and then all over my 0 0.1. And then I could throw all this into a calculator, and I got, I'll give you an intermediate step here, a 19.36 minus 16 over 0 0.1 and I get 33.6. What are my units? I don't know. Sure I do. They're right there. That's why I start my problems with my units written out. So now it helps me to remember this is a rate, 15 feet per second. So, so basically what this is saying is if I looked at this graphic, graphically, graphically, that's a hard word for me, 16t squared, well, it's going to be a, per hello, stop it, is going to be a parabola. I didn't see what, look what happened there. <laughs> Hold, please. Let's go back, let's go back. All right, we, we back in action, we back in action. Let me move some, some camera stuffs around here. You go over, hey, hello, you go over here. So basically what we just did Okay, because this is important that you understand. We said if I have the graph, don't do that again. If I have the graph of 16t squared, it's an ugly parabola, but hey, let's go with it. It's a parabola. And then what I am interested in is, let's say, between 1 
and 1.1 and we'll make it you know look bigger so you can see it second and so basically what I've done here is I've said between this point and this point I can draw a line and this we called if you remember the secant line my handwriting's not this bad I promise you okay so I have a secant line here what I could do is I could actually use my point slope formula my y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1 and I could find the equation of my secant line well my y1 well let, let's put my slope in first what's m that's what we just found 33.6 that's my slope so in other words this is the slope and then x minus what was my point of interest one that's my t sub zero we could have used same variables i guess y sub one is your function value when you plug in your x value so when i plug in one for t squared or t then i get 16. if i go through the steps and i solve this for y you'll see you'll get 33.6 x and then minus 17.6 don't forget you're distributing this okay so that's how i got it that is the equation of that line right hello I dro i'm driving stuff that's the equation of that line right there and you're going to see that's going to become important later all right so that's what it shows here on the slides without all those steps is if i'm interested in one second well i can make an error of 0 0.1 seconds well, what if your boss says, ah, ah, not good enough. Make the error smaller. No big deal. I'll just do what I did previously, the same steps. But now, instead of 0.1, notice I have 0 0.01. Your boss says, uh-uh, need something a little closer. Notice what's happening here. So at 0.1, I get a slope, a rate of change of 33.6. Here, 0 0.01, my number's changing, 32.16. Here, my number, but it's kind of hanging around 32, huh? So what if I just added a whole bunch of zeros here, made this gap as small as I could, and what I did is I created an Excel spreadsheet to kind of show you this. As notice as H is getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, and smaller what we call that is a limit as h is getting very close to zero it can't be zero because we can't divide by zero but notice this column is reaching a limiting value which is 32. so what that suggests okay if it's approaching this limiting value of 32 feet per second is that suggest at exactly one second if i can make that gap as small as i can that that toaster is falling at that particular speed okay at exactly one second that is how fast that toaster is falling so you could check this algebraically okay you could go through these steps and what i mean by that i mean t sub zero is one i want to know at one second what do i make the gap i i don't know i just want it to be small okay as, as you saw the smaller it got it reached that limiting value well, for right now, let's not plug any number in. Let's just do the algebra. So if I take 1 plus h squared, do you remember how to square that? FOIL, remember FOIL? 1 plus h times 1 plus h. That's where I'm getting this piece here. Then I distribute the 16. So I distribute that out. Notice the 16's canceled. This will always happen. You will have nothing left but your h's. I factor out an h. I cancel out an h. And do you notice something here, that 32? If I say the limit is when H gets really, 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 really small. What is really, 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 really small? Well, really small, zero, right? If I let H approach zero, I can't let it equal zero. And you're going, but aha, uh -huh, you're doing, no, 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 no. You can't let it equal zero or you would have divided by zero somewhere along the way. However, when I go through all these computations here, what's happening is as I say H is approaching zero, I get my limiting value. So that's the value that you also saw on the table. So basically what we're doing 
is we're rocking our secant line. Remember our secant line is you have a, a graph, okay, a curve. You have two points on that curve and you connect a line. Well, let's make the second point closer, 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 closer. What happens, you make it so close, instead of doing 1.1 1 1 and 1.1, 1 .1, why not do 1 and 1.0000000000? 000 000 so basically, there's no distance there. Two points on the curve is a secant line. One point, and I am just touching that point only, is a tangent line. So if you remember, I went through and I solved how to get the equation for um, the secant line on the last one, and that's what it's showing right here. You can see my graph, the difference. I have two points on my curve, okay? Over here, my tangent line now, okay? So I saw my slope was 32, and I could go back through the same steps and plug in um, my, my values for y1 and x1 and solve, and this is my actual equation. So this is important. This is huge because now I don't have to pick two points. I can say I only care about one exact point, okay? Two point secant line, one point tangent line, okay? Secant line is an average rate of change, okay? Yeah, from one to one second, you know, one to 1.1 seconds about this. Tangent line is an instantaneous rate of change, which is where you're taking the limit, okay? So that's all this is blah, 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 math language. But it is saying that you are taking the limit, okay? You're letting that H get really, really small, and you will see typically they write it with this piece right here. So this looks the same. I mean, it was T sub zeros, but same thing. We're saying as we pick some value for A, okay, that we're trying to actually get the rate that the function is changing at that exact value, we could do it by using this formula, which again, going backwards is still the slope, right? But now we're going to add this one little piece right here. So that one little piece makes a huge difference. Average rate of change, where I'm looking at some kind of small gap. Instantaneous rate of change, where now I'm saying I'm going to make that error, H, my error, my gap, zero. And <clears throat> this is huge. I know I keep saying huge, but this is what we call a derivative. So the instantaneous rate of change is a derivative. It's also the slope of the graph of the function. It's a slope of a tangent line at an exact point. And in notation, you just saw this. Remember how you write functions. You write out like f of x. <coughs> Sorry. Or in this case, f of a. Notice the little, we call it a prime right there. When you see that little prime, that means this is your instantaneous rate of change, which is the derivative. More to come about derivatives, but again, the big key now is we don't have to look at a big gap between two points. Now we're saying, no, let that gap go to zero, okay, so we have no error, and as it gets smaller and smaller, we're reaching this limiting value, and that's where we're going to go to.